Thousands of Americans took to the streets to protest racism across the country after George Floyd, an African American, was killed by a police officer who kept his knee on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes, even as Floyd repeatedly said, I can't breathe, it it and eventually became unresponsive. Everybody the incident was clearly reported on world. video. I can't breathe. Oh, ah. Shut up. The protests soon spread to other parts of the world, from London to Pretoria to Sydney and beyond. On June 17, 2020, weeks after the death of George Floyd, the United Nations Human Rights Council held an urgent debate at the UN headquarters in Geneva on police brutality and systemic racism in the United States. The 47-member state forum unanimously adopted a resolution brought by African countries strongly condemning the discriminatory and violent policing which led to the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis and requested a report on systemic racism against people of African descent especially those incidents Changed that resulted in the years. death of George Floyd. The mandate also asks UN well High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, to, to examine government to responses to peaceful protests, policy. including alleged use of excessive force. I think the, the UN is doing what it possibly can within a political environment. There will always be criticism. When I saw uh, the criticism of the US on the Human Rights Council, that they claimed that Israel was, was treating, treated badly, and I, of course, also didn't like some of the comments made on Israel within the Human Rights Council, but it also says something about being a sore loser. I mean, if you can't win your political argument and you start to claim that the institution is not working, I think the UN can stand that uh, and it can, can thrive without uh, subsuming to that kind of criticism. It's a political body, politics always plays a role and that will be the case. Uh, so not to worry, uh, just continue the good work the UN is doing.